Hi there, this is Pastor Steve Kimes of Anoim Christian Community, and we're continuing on with the story of the Bible. And this is number seven. We're talking about the fall. So Adam and Eve were living in this wonderful paradise where they can connect to God and, and have sex as much as they wanted and eat fruit off of trees and never have to work except to take care of things. Pretty good deal. There is, of course, always a condition. There, there was a condition here, although it was a very small one. God says, there's one tree in the garden I don't want you to eat. And that's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And you may think, well, why did God put that tree there? Why, didn't, uh, that, why did he cause this huge temptation to be there? I mean, you know that they'd be thinking about it and all that. You know what? God put one tree in the midst of a garden that was more than a million acres uh, large. So there's millions and millions and millions of trees out there. And he said, oh yeah, there's one, one of those you can't eat from. I don't think it's, we're talking about a huge temptation. And it is interesting, actually, that when it comes time for uh, for the whole deal with Eve and, and the serpent and they're talking to each other, that Eve and Adam are both just hanging around the one tree out of millions of acres that they could be, they're just hanging around that, that one tree. So I think that they were probably already thinking about it. Okay, well, what is this tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? It's not an apple tree, nor is it an arbitrary tree. It's uh, the name of it actually is pretty uh, pretty descriptive in that uh, it says that it is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That means you eat of the fruit of it and you obtain knowledge to be able to discern good and evil on your own. Now does that mean that Adam and Eve didn't have that before? Well, let's just say that they were kind of like as far as their experience goes, they were kind of like toddlers. They didn't really have much experience. They didn't know uh, a lot about the world or how things worked. Uh, so it was good that they had someone to help them. And that was God. God was there with them every day to help them uh, help them deal with their issues and their problems. And, and they would listen to him and they'd talk things out with him. Uh, and so God was kind of like a, a parent. They would, they would have uh, rule of the garden during the day and then God would help them at night help them through whatever issues they had and he would teach them about what was good and what was evil to take uh, the the tree to take that tree is to say I don't want any outside knowledge of good and evil I want to figure it out on my own I'm I'm good enough to do it on my own so Adam and Eve are there uh, hanging around that tree, and there is the serpent. And who is the serpent? Well, the serpent is the only serpent that's been in the story up to this point. Once again, not in Genesis 1, but in the pre-story that we have uh, an indication of in Psalm 74. Leviathan. Leviathan is a dragon, which is just another name for a big serpent. Uh, Leviathan is a dragon. So is he hanging around there? Yeah. Yeah, he's the one. He's there. He said, wait a minute. Didn't I hear somewhere that that's Satan? Yeah. Yeah, that's Satan too. Uh, maybe at a later time we'll talk more about what Satan means and all that. But for right now, Leviathan, who rebelled against Yahweh before, uh, before the creation, the seven days in Genesis chapter 1, he's there in the tree. And He's talking to Adam and Eve. And we need to remember that one of the things that Leviathan wants is he wants to be in charge of the world. And he is furious that God put in charge these little piddly, weak human beings to be in charge of the world. I mean, they're clearly not suited for the job. And so why is, why is he doing that? And so Leviathan is there to kind of undermine. He can't, he can't take away their authority but he can undermine their authority. So, uh, and the way for him to do that is to get them to disobey God's command. So there he is. And so the woman, whose name is not yet Eve, anyway, so the woman is there near the, the in the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil. And Leviathan says, did God really tell you that you couldn't eat off the fruit of this tree? And the woman says, that's right. We can eat all the fruit in all the garden, 
But this tree, we can't eat off of it or touch it or else we're dead. Now, first of all, Eve was kind of wrong because God had said that they couldn't, that they weren't supposed to eat off of it. Didn't He didn't say they couldn't touch it. I think that was probably Adam adding a little bit saying, okay, you know, you're not supposed to touch it either. Let's, let's just stay away from this. And uh, so Leviathan says, uh, says, you're not going to die if you touch it. God knows that if you eat this tree, you yourself will be a god. You will have the knowledge of good and evil within yourself. You will never have to depend on God again. And the woman thought to herself, well, this fruit doesn't look too bad. I bet it'll make me smart, as smart as God himself, maybe. And really, it looks very good, and I'm, I'm kind of hungry. And so she convinced herself to eat the fruit. And then she handed it to the man, Adam. And he saw the fruit, and he knew where it was from. He looked at, at the woman, and she wasn't harmed by it. He wanted to be as smart as God. That's what he really wanted. He wanted to be independent of God so that way he can rule without anybody else telling him what to do. So he ate the fruit as well. And they looked at, it, at each other, and they said, <gasps> You're naked. Why are you naked? That's horrible. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And so they ran off and hid. Now we're going to get God's first question to them is, who told you that you were naked? Well, the thing is, is that they had eaten the, the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They told themselves they were naked. It doesn't matter that, that they were naked. There was no shame in them being naked until they had eaten the fruit. Really? The fruit of the knowledge of tree and evil is making up rules for ourselves that aren't necessary. It's also called judgmentalism. That we're going to, you know, Adam's looking at Eve and saying, what are you doing being naked like that in front of everybody? Uh, in front of who? And Eve's looking at Adam saying, oh my goodness, you're naked in front of everybody too. This is horrible. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. And they were. They didn't have any reason to be ashamed. No, they just applied a rule to themselves and had it. And that's what the, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil really does. It increases rules to such a degree that we have increased it more and more that by this time, we have a tax code that you can't even lift. All of that is the result of the knowledge of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because even today, we're still trying to make up rules uh, and trying to tell each other that we should all be ashamed of ourselves. All right, may the Lord bless you and keep you and give you peace.